How's it going? This is Pastor Troy with Demonstrated TV, and we're here with an all new episode. We've revamped everything, have a new team. We're going after LA and Denver and Chicago and New York and London, releasing the power of God where people are. So, we have a new team. In a second, you're going to meet Angelica, you're going to meet Matthew, people that are on fire for God. So, stay tuned. Listen to Angelica's testimony coming at you. Hello everyone, I'm Angelica and I'm working with Pastor Troy and together we're going around different areas in Los Angeles and just praying for people and seeing God's power and um, just fall upon them and just seeing miracles happen every day and just seeing God touch different people in different ways. The last year and a half the Lord has guided me to go to different ICUs. Uh, different hospitals here in Los Angeles and to pray for people. I love going into the ICU centers because when man says that there's no more hope for a person, uh, that's where God shows up and I have that privilege to go in there and lay hands on those people and I've seen many of those lives touched by the Lord and by His power and I've seen them healed. Um, I've seen them get out of those beds and being back home healthy. Um, also, last Saturday, we went to an area here in Los Angeles and we were knocking on people's door and just, you know, praying for them. And one of the ladies at a home, she opened her door and the Holy Spirit just took me <laughs> and started speaking to her. Um, in her native, no, not her native language, I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit just started ministering to her in German. And I've never spoken German before. It's the first time through the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand a word, but the Holy Spirit knew her heart and her thoughts, and He ministered to her, and she understood it. It's just great to be out here and just doing the Lord's work and I just encourage everyone who's watching this video wherever you are wherever parts of the world you're located that you go out there and you also share the love of God with those around you and just lay hands on the sick just how Jesus commanded us to do it and if you believe we know that they will be healed in Jesus name God bless you everybody hello world my name is Matthew and while I'm here with Pastor Troy and we have a mission, we have a mission to go share God's love wherever we go. Because there's many people today, well not right here, but many people out in the whole world that need love. Because this world lacks love. And we're coming after you to give you God's love. Hopefully this will change your way of thinking. Because we all need love, we all need attention. And God has loved you since the first day. God has loved you since before you were even created. And we're going to go share that love with you. Are you ready? Let's see where we come. That was awesome, wasn't it? I know it was. We're going to have a brief clip of last week's service in Los Angeles. Enjoy it. I'll see you later. I just had this thought that said, they don't know. They don't know about the love. They don't know about what he sacrificed. They don't know about what he did. And I just started crying. And I just kept saying that for like five minutes and then ten minutes. And I just kept saying, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. And I started tearing up because people don't know. They don't know what Christ has done for them. They don't know how he bled and how he was beaten. He was beaten beyond recognizability. He was beaten beyond any man that's ever been beaten. Why was Jesus beaten to such an extent? Why did he have to go through such... Anyone seen the movie The Passion of the Christ? Yes. When they beat him with the cat and nine tails, that literally goes into your flesh and rips it all out. They did it all over his body. So the question is, why did Jesus have to get beat so badly? Because he could have just went to the cross and been crucified. But why did he have to be been beaten so bad? The reason why Jesus had to be getting had to get beat so bad is because we were in such a fallen state that we were unrecognizable to our Heavenly Father. The way that God created Adam, we became so unrecognizable to our Heavenly Father, that's why Jesus had to get beat so bad, so that we could become recognizable to our Father. We weren't created in sin. We weren't created to live the way we became. We became that way because of sin. 
And because Jesus paid the price for us, now we became recognizable to our Father. So that after that, we can look before God and say, I'm back. See, we must understand this. There must be a revelation to every single person that because Jesus was beaten, I'm unbeatable. Because he laid his life down, I might live. Because what he has done, now I can be. Amen. You see, we're not trying to be a Christian. We're not trying to do this or trying to do that. It's who I am. So earlier today, I was like, Lord, what should I minister today? What should, what should I teach? Because we can talk about healing. We can talk about faith. We can talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And God was like, I need them to know who they are. Because if your identity is not in place, you will do things to gain acceptance. You will heal the sick and you will minister out of a need to feel acceptance before God. But God is saying, you're already accepted. You're already loved. No matter what you do, the doing is because I'm convinced of it, so therefore I do. But I don't do to become accepted. Because once we know who we are, the doing is just natural. I learned long ago that many people, because I study a lot of different moves of the Spirit and a lot of things that, that have happened over the last hundred or so years, and many people that move in the power of the anointing, move in the power of the Spirit, they don't end well. They start well, but they don't end well. But why is that? I, I, I went before God, I was like, why is that? That people had great signs, great miracles, but then when they get to their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it doesn't keep going up and up. And the answer is because they didn't know their identity. They knew the spirit. They knew how to move the gift. But they didn't know who they were. And if you don't know who you are, you will try to do things to gain righteousness, to gain acceptance. But what I want to teach today is if you know who you are, you don't have to do that. You will, will, you will willingly do it. It's like giving dynamite to kids. Yeah, they'll learn how to, and they'll blow up, but they'll blow themselves up. And it's the same way. If you teach faith, if you teach the anointing, if you teach the power of God, without people knowing who they are, they'll blow themselves up. So we must know who we are today. We must have it become a reality. So no matter what happens, it will not shake you, but in power. Or another translation is not in just talking only but in power or demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. In another passage, Paul says, I didn't come to you in the excellency of speech and enticing words, but I came to you in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and His power. See, when Paul went to these far-off lands, they had never heard of any of this stuff. So Paul shows up. He didn't show up with words. Paul didn't show up with theology. Paul showed up with the power of God to such an extent that people wanted to worship. They thought he was God. Paul would be like, oh, oh don't, don't worship me now. Don't worship me. Look at him. Look, that's Jesus. And you, and you can have him too. See, in the book of Acts, the people were so amazed with the power of the Holy Spirit, one of the sorcerers wanted to pay the apostles to get it. He was like, I don't, that, that's not what this is. <laughs> but we haven't seen that level of demonstration. See, this society, if you just turn on primetime TV, it's like we're infatuated with the occult and the demonic world and witches and warlocks and all that. Almost every movie. The Wizard of Oz is coming out next week about the great wizard. Another movie came out about, um, about all these witches and the white witch. And the, I'm like, what is this? Do we not have the spirit of God? There's vampires and the where It's like we're infatuated with everything but the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of God will blow it out the water. That's why when the sorcerer, who was a, he was a powerful sorcerer, Simon the sorcerer, when he saw the real thing, he said, I want that. It didn't say he repented. It didn't say he, he, he said he saw the real thing and he wanted that. Why don't we give the world the, world, the real thing? It's like we're sitting on this secret. This is like this secret society that only certain people know about. Like when I really started digging into this and studying this, it was like, it was this big secret. You got to do this intense Google search to, like, what is that? It's right in the book. Everything I'm giving you today is right in this word. John 14, 12. When I read that scripture, I was like, how come all the years I've been alive, all the years that the church has been around, 
I never one minister preached John 14, 12. John 14, 12. Matter of fact, let's read it. Let's read it. John 14, 12 says that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto the Father. Then he, goes, then he even goes on to say, anything you ask in my name, I'll give it. But the verse 12 says, the works that I do, shall he do? And greater works? So you mean to tell me, Jesus was on the earth doing ministry in the ministry capacity for three and a half years. So you mean to tell me that the stuff Jesus did, breaking of the bread, feeding the 5,000, raising people from the dead, healing the multitudes, prophesying, doing all these miracles, I can do that today? You mean to tell me that was in this book all these years and we didn't know about it? How many people can you just Google or turn on the TV and see them doing the works of Jesus? I can't find one. Can't find one. You can find a lot of people preaching about Jesus, preaching about faith, preaching about deliverance, but who's actually doing it? If you turn on any channel, see, because my background, I don't, I, I didn't come from the little backwoods small church where it's a big secret. I come from the from the entertainment business, from the mute where you have an artist, you want the whole world to know about how good your artist is. You want them on on the Today Show, you want them on MTV. VH1, you want people uh, blogging about him, twi tweeting about him. But then when it comes to Christ, oh, shh, shh. it's like it's a big secret. When all the while people are dying every day, is this not something that's more valuable than anything the world has to offer? 39,000 39, people kill themselves every year. They just kill themselves every year. Suicide because they're, they're hopeless. And you mean to tell me we've been sitting on a book of hope and we're afraid to even tell our neighbor that Jesus loves them? It's like we're sitting on the greatest thing ever. So when I came up, when I came up, up, up upon it, I was honestly a little angry. Because there's a church, anywhere you go in this country, there's probably a church on every, every other street corner there's a church. But yet, how many people are just doing the simple things that Jesus said? Everything I'm saying to you right now is in the Word. One of the most powerful things that Jesus said before he ascended in the book of Mark, he said, okay, I'm paraphrasing now. Okay, I'm about to go, I'm about to, go to heaven. They're probably like, how, do you, how are we going to know who's really with you? Jesus says, okay, this is how you're going to know who's with me. Because these signs are going to follow those that really believe. They're going to speak with new tongues. They're going to cast out demons. If they drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt them. If they get beat, if they get bitten by any deadly animal, it's not going to hurt them. And they're going to lay hands on the sick, and the sick are going to recover. That's how you're going to know who's with me. Close the book, went up to heaven. 2,000 years later, what do we see? And my job is just to ignite people to say, you can do it. I'm hearing testimonies from all over the world. People say, I never knew I had the ability to heal. I never knew that's what that scripture was even in there. But I saw someone was, with, had a pain in their leg. I just went up to them and laid hands on them and they got healed. From all over the world. I launched my Facebook page in June of 2012. Roughly seven months. And... I've been getting testimonies. I get literally testimonies every day from around the world of people that, that realize who they were. They're like, oh, we've been empowered to do this. See, one of the greatest revelations that I have received was the, the reason Jesus was able to do what he was able to do is because he was empowered with the Holy Spirit. So then... He never did anything outside of what he saw the Father do, and he was empowered with the Holy Spirit. So then, he goes up to the Father, he says, don't fret, I'm going to send another, I'm going to send you what I have. And once I give you what I have, you can do what I do. The Comforter he's referring to. Then it says, in Romans 8, in verse 11, he says, In that same Spirit that raised Christ up from the dead, 
resides in you. So all my life I was thinking that Jesus had this superpower thing that we didn't have. And Jesus is saying, that's not so. I've given you everything I have to get the job done. See, we always think that it's something else we need. We need something else. Let me speak to this minister and get this anointing. Let me go to this conference and get this mantle. Let me speak to this and get this gift. When Jesus said, I've given you everything, don't seek other gifts. Unwrap the gifts I've already given you. It says it right in the word that everything that Christ had, you have because you are in Christ. Christ is in you. One of the ways to look at it is kind of like, you ever go to like uh, like New York or one of like maybe um, like a carnival where they have um, they have like a ball I forget what it's called but they have like a ball and then they have the three cups and you got to find out where the where the ball is and where the they at and then they take it away you got to try to figure out which it is that's what it's like when it says that we're in Christ Christ is in us. We're in the Father. Holy Spirit's in us. It should be to such an extent where we're so intertwined that when the devil tries to step to you, he doesn't know, is this Jesus? Is this Ashley? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is... We're so intertwined with him. We're married to him. We're the bride. We're the body. He's in us. We're so intertwined. You don't know where you stop, where he begins. When he looks at you, he sees the blood. He doesn't want that battle. See, we get so caught up in the demonic world. And what if they have a demon? You know, you shouldn't lay hands if they have a demon. We get so caught up, but not understanding who we are. If we knew who we were, <laughs> I like the analogy about people say, um, well, if you if you cast out a demon, well, can it land on you? And I'm like, that's like a if you have a burning hot stove. Would a fly want to land on that stove? Yeah, he might land, but he'll fly right off as soon as he gets there. You being so inflamed and on fire with the Holy Spirit, you think a demonic spirit wants to touch that? He's going to get as far away from you as he can. And that's why as we walk through society, just being who we are, it's going to attract love and it's going to repel anything that's not like God. I love this story about one of the, one of the preachers that I love. He went to Africa. And there was this witch doctor, and he was all, you know, he was bragging. He was like, yeah, I can command over 100,000 spirits. I, can, I, well, I tell them to do stuff, and they do it. I tell them to go go to the, you know, put a curse on this person. I, I speak to animals. He was just bragging. He's like, okay. This is a powerful man and guy he was talking to. He's like, okay, so let me ask you this. So you say that you can command um, 100,000 spirits, right? Okay. I got a question for you. Where are those spirits at right now? See, because when he came into contact with a born-again, spirit-filled believer, them spirits was gone. They didn't want anything to do with that. And he ended up giving his life to God because he was like, he felt naked. He was like, what is this? What's going on? And that's how it is. See, we don't have to know all the ins and outs of the demonic world. We need to know who we are in Christ. Once you know who we are, all that other stuff doesn't even mean anything.